Hello everyone. In this video, uh, we are going through the practical work as we see here on the screen that is workshop practice for carpentry. So here in this pra workshop practice, we have to prepare two jobs under this carpentry shop. So let's get started with what exactly of carpentry is. The carpentry is nothing but to construct, repair and install building framework and structures made by wood. Here carpenters uses arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus and even statistics to measure materials, add up values and complete other project planning of tasks. So here let's start with the jobs so we can see here job one which is called cross half lap joint this is what the drawing how it has to be and how it sh seems like so this is what a cross half lap joint so we need to prepare uh, this job with the help of wooden piece so another is of t half lap joint so you can see this here is a T shaped lap joint. So these two jobs we need to be prepared in this carpentry section. So let's begin with uh, introduction or you can say the tools which are required in the essential carpentry tools you can see. Here. So here the, some of the uh, names and, and the pictures we have given here to understand you uh, in a clear way so let's get uh, start with this so here some store essential carpentry tools according to their class into hand tools power tools even measuring tools bench tools and prepared relevant information on what the tool does and how to operate it and what to look out for when you buy one right so this one I'm talking about we are talking about this hand tool used in carpentry so first in that that is carpentry pencil so you can see here this it is used to create or draw lines mark areas for cutting right or you can say that uh, make notches in the material when uh, measuring and the planning and you can find them in the either hexagonal shape you can say hexagonal shape or uh, flat right so but they are usually not in the round as we have regular pencils are used right because uh, they get a uh, uh, mismatched or it turned around so it would should not be turned get round so uh, we are using here in the carpentry section the hexagonal shape or flat shape of pencil and here uh, in some cases or uh, if you good uh, handle with the uh, round pencil you can use as well so this is what carpentry pencil and this uh, the hexagonal or flat design prevents what them from the rolling away as I told that right. So this is uh, one of the uh, hand tool used in the uh, carpentry and uh, another we can see here that is claw hammer this we can say this claw hammer here claw hammers are, are the most practical for carpentry as well in the claw tail can pull out you can see here they can pull out the nail and act as a prey bar for wood boards and here's a hammer with a round head this is what the round head are usually superior in the terms of heat pressure uh, when they're driving the nail uh, but also it would be a very safety as without sharp edges they won't scratch uh, the wood around the nail be careful not to use the hammers for driving wood boards into place when the joining. The mallet is much better suited for the job and won't damage the world surface. So this is what the claw hammer. Now uh, next part you can see is the set of uh, screwdrivers. So everyone knows that uh, it's a good idea to use what exact match what uh, screws and the screwdrivers, right? As a blade too wide uh, could damage the screw even, right? And also screwdrivers with a longer 
shanks allow you to apply more torque when the turning the screw while also use less force even right so this is what the, uh, about uh, screwdrivers and uh, if you talking about uh, utility knife uh, so it's not much a use uh, even though we are considering this is one of the tool that where uh, in a carpentry sections are used while this uh, knife is not a tool directly used in the carpentry as I told that so as much as others on the list uh, it's a still the essential piece of that uh, arsenal and the utility knife has plenty of uses where you can say that uh, cutting boxes or uh, springs uh, marking pieces of woods uh, even uh, stripping excess material and opening cans of wood paint etc right so this carpenters always keep in this uh, tool or utility knife in their pockets right and if you're talking about a mallet so uh, this mallets are similar to that kind of uh, as we have pre previously uh, gone through that hammer but it's quite uh, different uh, here uh, performs better as specific tasks over here especially for while jointing or joining the wood parts together and the mallet uh, will be your best friend when it comes to push planks into place and uh, creating a tight fit right so here uh, like with the trunks and bevels of floorboards or you can say when uh, doing furniture or services also uh, we use uh, mallet rather than hammer uh, you can say here when the using of chisel or other hand tools so we'll we'll get to know that what kind of chisels are so in the next slide we'll, we'll see uh, chisels are and uh, where other hands tools uh, that requires force and even it's a good idea to drive them with a mallet right uh, where compared to that hammers usually metal head the wood or rubber head of the mallet will be not deformed or break any chisel handle right so this is what the mallet uh, description so another is a very important tool that uh, carpenters are uh, depends so this is what the hand plane or you can say that jack plane uh, so here hand planes are one of the oldest tool of the trade in this carpentry, trade and uh, they can be used both a basic tool for a rough work or as a detail for finishing steps as well and they are composed to uh, metal blades fastened to a long you can say here right uh, and uh, flat stock with the diagonal handle for pushing and uh, dragging them across the flat surface like this uh, will shave off uh, springs of wood you can say the springs of wood evenly right and we'll get the perfect for a trimming side of the planks and uh, uh, surface finish would be there and in the hands of this skilled cra uh, craftsman here uh, they can be used to uh, create round edges by shaving at the 45 degree angle also uh, known as we can say uh, edge planing right so another you can say here as i told that a set of chisels so this is what the another important uh, tools we're using here in the carpenter section that is chisels you can say chisels are carving tools composed of a sharp metal blade uh, with a variety of shapes and angles attached to the uh, wooden or you can metal handle or you can say plastic handles and uh, they are used to either shave away material or outright back part away when the driving by given by the mallet right you can you cannot be used for where here uh, hammer instead of hammer you have to use for here the mallet and uh, when using the uh, mallet it's uh, advisable to have a wooden handle and it's more elastic than the metal one right and on the structural level so another uh, you can say this uh, hand cut saw or can, or you can say the hand saw 
So this is also very important uh, tool in the carpentry usage, uh, where the hand saw is your trusty companion in the ma making rough cuts, uh, such as sizing down pieces of wood for further work, right? And uh, it's a long straight metal blade with a sharpened teeth attached to the wooden or metal hand or plastic handed. Uh, and here uh, the cutting is done by back and forth motion uh, we'll see in the uh, video next coming videos so and the blades has been series of teeth spaced out of equally between and the number of teeth corresponds to the blades purpose and here uh, forever teeth will lead to smoother cuts and having uh, more teeth will be made cutting faster isn't it so albeit less smooth from the additional shading in this hand saw so here now is a marking gauge uh, this is also a very important tool in the carpet instruction uh, here the wooden marking gauge and you can say here the metal marking gauge over here or uh, so here the marking gauge is used in a woodworking to mark out lines for cutting or other purposes. So here the main purpose is to scribe a line parallel to the surface of that edge on that of the workpiece, right? So another is a, you can say this power tool. This is one of the power tools because the electric drive over here. So this we call it electric drives. So this is called the circular saw, right? So here circular saw is the one of the most used to uh, wood workshop tools instead of uh, you can say hand saw you can use this circular saw for cutting and it's a must have to wood working tool in the carpentry right and it's a motor is powered by electricity as I told that and this uh, circular saw is used for marking straight cuts and it is used for rip cuts cross cuts or even uh, for a blend of both cuts as well and it can be penetrated through wood effortlessly and thus very convenient for use also so another is here you can say the carpenter square or tri square you can say so here in this carpenter square is basically a scale you can say here scale and this uh, form of scale is of combination of two scales so here you can see here together joined by 90 degree angle and the two scales resembles two arms this is first second arm first one second arm and uh, typically such scales are made of steel and also called steel squares or framing squares or tri squares and uh, however uh, they are also made of aluminium and even plastics as well but such scales are uh, lighter and resistance to rust right so here in the uh, woodworking uh, requires a lot of measurements to gain the accuracy right so parallelism of 90 degree is very essential in the uh, woodworking part right so here the uh, slightly miss measurements might lead to a huge crisis right so for that preventing preventing this miss measurements we are using this uh, tri square or, or you can say this uh, carpenter square and uh, that's why the carpenter squares always need to be there on a woodworkers workbench and uh, it is also used to measure the lines and uh, angles to make it perfect cut right so here another is carpentry bench wise so this is what the work wooden work wise is a type of wise primarily designed to solid uh, solidly clamp right uh, about wood part or wooden piece where we are going to work on it so where for without damaging the surface of where you are clamping right so here would often need to be clamping when the completing tasks such as uh, sawing drilling or even say carpentry work 
so having this uh, voice in this position also keeps the surface of that workbench clear for the users to complete other tasks as well so this is what the carpentry bench was so if you see the measuring tape this is what uh, the measuring tape uh, you can say this uh, flexible uh, scaling instrument and these uh, might come in a different forms but all have the same purpose of measuring uh, there are measuring tapes of the metal strips plastic ribbon polymers and others all of them have a linear scaling mark on it right and here the different measuring tapes have different scale system and uh, some comes in the inches or some comes in the meters or even comes in a millimeter and also uh, some all are have all combination of all so here now another is the steel rule used in the carpentry right you can you might have observed here so the steel rule is a basic measuring so here is the another uh, steel rule uh, in the carpentry used uh, here in the in this you may have gone through this kind of uh, steel rules uh, here in the steel rule is a basic uh, measuring tool uh, as we know already right so when used this uh, uh, steel rule where correctly and you can say this uh, steel rule is a good steel rule in uh, surprisingly accurate measuring device you can say and uh, what exactly is steel rule if you ask so you can say here uh, a scale is measuring device used by uh, architectures uh, and even engineers that assists them uh, in the making a drawing to a scale so other than the full size so here the rule is uh, used to measure accurate sizes right so this is what uh, we have to be prepared uh, half lap joint and uh, this is what the drawing has been uh, given so according to this dimensions we need to be prepared this uh, cross half joint this is first job so you can see here uh, here is a half lap over here of size is 40 uh, by this is a 40 by 40 right and this would be height is of 30 and this length is of 55 55 and 40 this would be a, a 150 right so this is 110 and this is 40 this is what 150 mm all are in mm so this is 150 and this is 30 and this is 40 right and uh, this half portion or half lap you can say this is 30 so half of that is 15 so you can see here this is what up to the 15 of depth of the from the top surface so this is what the part drawing and the dimensions of this cross half lap joint and you can say here uh, t half lap joint uh, it has to be seems like this and for this uh, T half lap joint the drawing has been given over here like this so as similar as this uh, cross lap joint one part is same and uh, another is you need to be half lap over here in the end of the another part of this wooden piece of the size 150 by 30 by 40 right and uh, this is size of 15 only so this would be of 40 so that it would be fixed over in this slot so this is what the two jobs and we have discussed about the tools even so let's get start with the practical where uh, these are the some of the uh, work wooden work piece where we are you going to work on this wooden piece so let's get started with the practical work so here we're going to see this is what a uh, metal jack plane and here also we will get a uh, wood jack plane as well so now we are considering here the metal jack plane as we have discussed previous uh, use of jack planes in the previous slides right 
So here, these are the different chisels. This is what cross cuts, cross cut saw. So you can see here, and this is what uh, mallets, and this is what tri tri square, and this is what pincer. Pincer, you can say, and uh, this is what marking gauge and these are the hammers and these are the steel rules or you can say that tape rule as well right so this is what the hand tools and here is the power tools we can say this is what a power jack plane this is what power jack plane you can see here the blade here so this is what the blade right and this is what the cutting electric cutting machine you can say the power cutting machine right and this is what hand saw right so we'll start with the how we do a job with the help of a drawing so here is the wood piece so size of we can check it out uh, what is the size of this wood piece now so size is of you can see here this is what 40 you can say this 47 mm by 47 by 30 35 and the length could be of We'll get it out. Let's check it out. How the length? How much length is? Uh, this is about 32 and 2. 33 and 22. Okay. So now we will, according to the diagram, we need to be uh, make it possible in the dimensions as per given in the drawing sheet. So here uh, we need to be plain any two sides of that metal piece oh, sorry uh, wooden piece so it might be from one this side and one this side so we need to be make it plain with the help of jack plane or you can say power jack plane so before that we need to clamp in this bench wise so this is what we are going to fix it on the jank bench wise so just tightened it just do the with the help of jack plane just plane this surface so now you can check it out whether it has been so now you can see here this is what previous surface and after this jack plane operation you can see this the finishing of that surface so after that we need to be check out whether this surface is flat or not with the help of this tri square you can use it to make this assurance of flatness of that surface so you can see here somewhat or 90% is what still remain of perfectly flatness so you need to do a perfect flatness of that surface so here you can see that uh, while checking this flatness we can observe here there is no such kind of a flatness is observed some the gap has been observed here see here right so there is some of we need to still uh, make a work on that surface till it has to be make perfectly plain so again put it in the bench wise again you do the operation of jack plane operation plane the surface with the help of jack plane that is jack plane until it get plain surface uh, oh sorry. we can see here now the plane is quite plain now right 
so now another is rough side is here one we had done one side we have done this plane side right we have done it this plane and another is this side so we need to be plane this surface as well with right angle, with right angle. so just clamp this wooden piece and with the help of just tighten it and with the help of this jack plane again you need to be do this flat surface with so now this is what a uh, second plane so we just will get to, to check it out uh, whether it is a plane or not with the help of this tri square so here we will get that this is what plane we already done right yes and this is what first side and this is what sorry this is uh, second side we have done a plane surface and this is what we done first side so both of them in a right angle right so with the help of tri square we have already checked the plane surfaces right now next procedure is we need to be make a mark on that wooden piece according to with control according to dimensions so first this is what uh, first phase we can write on it for better uh, preference so this is first side and this is what we had done second side uh, facing yes and uh, we do now a third side this third side a uh, planing controlling the dimension according to the okay. according to the dimensions as per given in the drawing sheet right so we'll make on this surface 30 dimension and mark on that surface so with the help of this marking gauge this is what we can say here see here a pointer is here right so this is what pointer okay now we need to be control or we can we need to be mark up to so now we'll use this electric jack plane now we do this So here up to the mark we have already make that plane surface so we'll check it out whether it is up to the mark or not so we'll get to check it out whether it is 30 or not so here uh, we can see here this is what exactly 30 mm yes and this is what this is now this is what how much it is 40 44 45 yes this is 45 but according to the uh, drawing it should be of 40 mm so we need to again make a mark with the help of again marking gauge we will use and we will mark up to the 40 mm now we can see here next 40 mm is then marked and just tightened it and we'll see here exactly yes now you can see here it's of 40 mm mark we have done and just mark on that okay. the side of this work piece
so we have done already just for highlighting we need to be make it visible this is third side so for visibility we need to be make it that mark darker similarly the opposite side of the same this is what we have done the marking so now this plane we need to be again remove up to the that mark remove the material up to that mark so we will get the proper dimensions as per given in the drawing for this work can see here so we'll get to check it out whether it is up to the mark or not so now we can see here this is exactly 40 mm of this side so we'll check it out all the sides of that particular piece so first side is first side second side this is third side and this is fourth side we will check it out uh, the dimensions according to so the first side this is what 30 mm second side is again 40 mm yes this is 40 mm yes next third side is again 40 mm yes and fourth side is of 30 mm, mm. So here it is 30, 40 and the length we have to take according to the given 150. diagram. This is 150. So make it mark with the help of with the help of steel rule, with the help of tape. So use uh, tape here. So just 15, 150 mm here. So just mark it on here. Yes. So with the help of tri square, with the help of uh, tri square, we just make uh, all sides of visible of marking. Yes. So we can see here. So all side marking has been done now. So for the up to here, we need to be cut this one piece in a one piece. So with the help of so now we will cut with this cross cut saw or hacksaw. So we'll use here the cross cut saw here. So you can see or you can say this hexaw in the hexaw as well. So cut that in one piece. So 
So now we will use this electric jack plane. Now we do this. So here up to the mark we have already make that plane surface so we'll check it out whether it is up to the mark or not so we'll get it check it out whether it is 30 or not so here uh, we can see here this is what exactly 30 mm yes and this is what this is now this is what how much it is 40 44 45 yes this is 45 but according to the uh, drawing it should be of 40 mm so we need to again make a mark with the help of again marking gauge we will use and we will mark up to the 40 mm now we can see here next 40 mm is then marked and just tightened it and we'll see here exactly yes now you can see here it's up 40 mm mark we have done and just mark on that the side of this work piece so we have done already just for highlighting we need to be make it visible this is third side so for visibility we need to be make it that mark darker similarly the opposite side of the same this is what we have done the marking so now this plane we need to be again remove up to the that mark remove the material up to that mark so we will get the proper dimensions as per given in the drawing for this work can see here so we'll get to check it out whether it is up to the mark or not so now we can see here this is exactly 40 mm of this side so we'll check it out all the sides of that particular piece 
so first side is first side second side this is third side and this is fourth side we will check it out the dimensions according to so the first side this is what 30 mm second side is again 40 mm yes this is 40 mm yes next third side is again 40 mm yes and fourth side is of 30 mm, mm. so here it is 30 40 and the length we have to take according to the given 150 diagram this is 150 so make it mark with the help of with the help of steel rule with the help of tape so use uh, tape here so just 15 150 mm here so just mark it on here yes so with the help of tri square with the help of uh, tri square we just make uh, all sides of visible of marking yes so we can see here so all side marking has been done now so for the up to here we need to be cut this one piece in a one piece so with the help of so now we will cut with this cross cut saw or hexa so we'll use here the cross cut saw here so you can see or you can say this hexa is the hexa as well so cut that in one piece so now we have done this cutting so now we will remove this part yes so we will get this dimension of 150 the length is 150 for 30 and this is 40 right as per our drawing so as per drawing this is what the done part so we need to make this dimension on that this male part, male part. so this distance is of 15 Sorry. this female. distance is about female, female part. 15 mm so according to drawing we need to mark on this wooden piece with the help of again marking gauge now here 15, fix 15, this 15, 15 mm. mm mark set the marking gauge of 15 mm and tighten it yes so again just cross check whether it has been set properly 15 mm or not so now it is exactly 15 mm now on that particular job just make a mark on that side yes this side and another side same as it on the another side so you can see here the marking is not as much visible so we need to make it as darker with the help of pencil the steel rule so make them a darker line because we need to only middle portion so up to middle only we need to make a darker line so no need to do whole marking so now we have done this marking up to 15 mm now this is what the length total is 150 mm already we have got that so between this is 55 and again in that 40. middle between 
40 yes. mm so we can get here here again 50. this is 55 so middle portion is of 40 mm as per shown in the drawing right so make it marker with the help of tri square it has to become a perpendicularly or a line exactly straight so mark the portion Now we can see here, we can see here the marking has been done on this side. Removed. So this part has to be removed. Yes. So for betterment of removing this part, whatever the has mark has been done, we just move the material part by part of part by part. So now we'll remove this part. Before removing that, we need to be clamp a bench wise and uh, with the help of hexagon, just in between that marking, you just cut it now on the from the marking up to the mark. You just So up to the mark we just cut it out and same part over here this side again same so you can see here so betterment of removing that part you just uh, do such kind of uh, arrangement or just remove this up to This is what why we doing uh, because uh, we won't be uh, able to remove full material so we need to be make such kind of arrangement so that it should not be uh, damaged anywhere in this portion so it has to be removed properly safely or you can the surface should be as smoother so we need some arrangement such kind of it has to be removed proper way so now so we will use the chisels to remove uh, this part so now here you can see the chisel is here so just a minute you can see here so below that mark you just so you can see here so it is it is very easy to remove the material on that portion Now make this smoother surface. So you can see here, up to the mark, you just remove the material. So now you can see here up to the mark we have done this job, right? So just remove it. 
this is part has been done so here you can say that in the drawing there is cross lap joint same part has to be made another one and you can see here another part is available here so now here we already done a, uh, one part and similarly we do another part for that cross lap joint so now we can see here two parts are ready so just join them uh, together and this is what the done the job is has been done that cross lap joint so you can see here we can fix like this yes so this is what cross lap joint yes see here on this other side all the sides you can see how it would be yes yes now this is what cross lap joint one job has been done and another one is now t joint lap t joint we will get to know how to make this another t lap joint now so in that lap t joint this part is a similar one this part is similar one so second part we need to make this kind of and this is what the lap joint so we'll see how to this is what t so we need to be make this uh, part so how we have to be make we'll see it now so this is what lap t joint on this that part has to be made so now we have the material uh, wooden piece of the size we'll check it out already we had made a 30 40 size and the length we need to be maintained up to 150 mm here so with the help of steel rule with the help of steel rule uh, we'll check it out uh, the length of this is uh, about 17 we need to make it up 15 mm so we'll have to be make it up to 150 mm sorry that should be 115 mm that is 15 centimeter so this is what 15 just mark as 15 mm and with the help of tri square just mark it out Yes, so we have done marking and this part of the portion we need to be removed with the help of hexa. So for that we need to clamp this first. With the help of hexa, we just cut it out the extra part. We need to be cut this portion. Yes, we knew removed this excess part. Now check it out the dimension. This is what a 15 centimeter that is 150 mm is that right? So now according to the Marking. dimension a uh, marking of the drawing so we need to be marked on that part piece work piece as similar to this so for that using again just make the surface 
smoother with the help of with the help of udras file so now it's looking better so now again we just mark 40 as per the drawing 40 40 mm yes this is what we have done mark 40 mm for visibility for all the sides used to mark with the help of tri square three side three side And the height should be of 15 mm right so as per drawing you can see here this is of 15 mm sorry this would be a upper part should be of 15 mm or you can say this is also 15 mm because this total height is of 30 mm right uh, and with the help of this marking gauge just mark there's 15 mm this side and this side and as well front side as well and this is and front side as well so for visibility proper visibility you just make a mark on it with the help of steel ruler and pencil to mark so you can see here the marking has been done so upper portion has to be this remove yes so now <coughs> fix in the bench wise fix it as we had done the operation uh, the previous cross lap joint part so similarly with the help of hexa up to the mark we need to cut it So we are here. We have done for betterment of removing. Now using a chisel, just remove that. Chisel. Don't directly cut from that marking area. Just so now you just make this possible uh, surface finish. so it should be properly fixed in that slot yes camera okay. so just now you just remove this so you can see here this part has been done and this is what a cross lap joint and this one is lap joint and now we can fix this both no you can see here this is what perfectly done with the t lap lap joint yes yes so you can see here this is what has been done so it would be a better uh, finish uh, once you got a finish properly so it automatically get the finishing over here so this is what totally done of t lap joint this is what t lap joint okay this is what the second part of the drawing job